Good morning. So, as you can see, sometimes we get the van parked in some pretty tight places. Takes a little bit of maneuvering to get in and out. But we did it. We're on the road. You know, these Andy Mountains were formed on the fault line. And if you look at this wall right here, you can see how layers of rock have just been pushed up from the center of the earth. There's some really cool big caves up there in these walls. Now, I'm not telling you that's a hint, but it could be a hint for things to come. Look at this, guys. Wow, it's stunning through here. This slot canyon that we're driving in is continued on. We've crossed over to the other side of the river. Needless to say, the walls are still just as sheer. And really, we're kind of both just riding along here in amazement. It's so beautiful through here. We're coming over one of those sections that we've seen here in Peru, where it's like a half cave where we're driving under the big giant boulders. A little waterfall on the left side. Now, it does seem to be like a bit of a drier area. We do see sort of the grassy air plants uh, growing on the side of the mountain. We also see a lot of cactus and succulents and other things like that that make me believe this is a drier climate. However, you do get some lush kind of little selva type environments along the wet along the rivers and the wet areas so it's really a unique area and really stunning interesting these rocks are so big over top of us right now and the river literally if you can see we're kind of almost on a bridge or a berm the river's running right next to us i guarantee you the river has cut this out originally. Wow. This thing. And that rock looks like it could fall at any given moment. Glad to be out there. <laughs> what a great morning drive. Welcome to Chachapoyas. So, don't know really a ton about this city. It's not, quote unquote, the destination. Other than, as we've said, we've been struggling to find reliable grocery stores and we're starting to get low on cat food. So anyway, we came to Chachipoyo, hoping we can find some sort of big grocery store. All right, so we're back to an area with some interesting city planning. Narrow roads, narrow sidewalks, and they just happen to put the telephone poles in the road. Another thing that's very common, especially in these smaller little towns where the sidewalks are tight, if they want to do some construction, some remodel work, they just dump the dirt right here in the road and they'll mix their concrete right there or make their stucco or whatever they're going to use that pile of dirt for. All right, so this was the biggest grocery store we could find. So yeah, some nice looking lettuce and a little bit of produce. They do have some variety. Lots of sodas and juices to choose from. Here's sort of their meat section. So they got kind of some weird ham and hot dogs. They even have a little bacon, cream cheese, cereal bars toilet paper all around the outside bread which is good we've been struggling to find bread this is a ton of cookies and chips and snack foods all your toiletries and shampoos and things like that oh they have big bottles of water which we don't need right now because we just topped off but they have it so their cat food is mostly they took big bags and put it in smaller bags. We like to give our cats wet food for hydration. They do not have that. Lots of different tunas, pastas, oatmeal. They have the coffee section, of course. And jellies. 
and here's kind of the meat section. There's some trout down here. I don't know if you can see those. Uh, I don't know what these sealed meats are. Looks like some, some kind of smoked meats. And then down here they have some meats. Looks like it's cold down there, but I just don't trust it. I'm sorry guys, I'm not that brave. And they have all sorts of the sauces and vinegars and oils and dried beans and seeds and things like that. Yeah, the oodles and noodles, olive oil. Ooh, and they have little juice drinks. And that's our selection. So we should be able to find it out here to get us by for a few days. <laughs> I've taken to the street. This area is definitely just more of a market area. And so, there's not any big stores. And typically, I don't like buying meat from these places because it's not refrigerated. So, I'm probably a little picky, but I gotta walk around this town and see if I can find what I'm looking for. Yeah, see, so. So if we head up here, you can see right away. The chicken's just there, and they're sitting out, and the meat's hanging, and I just don't feel comfortable getting that. Wow. We are leaving what I'm gonna call the grocery store town. <laughs> Without a grocery store. Without grocery stores that we, we needed to find the kind of stuff we would have. But we found a loaf of bread. We found nuts and dried cranberries to go in my oatmeal. We found oatmeal. Uh, we found a few things. We will not starve. Do not worry. We I'll may have... become vegetarians. And the meats, the meats hanging up that aren't refrigerated and just all the chicken is just laying up on the counter raw. We are not where we could bring ourselves to buy meat at those kind of meat stores. So, we have hot dogs. Yeah. We have hot dogs. So, we're probably gonna be doing some vegetarian cooking until we get to a place that has a little bit better refrigeration system for the meat. And maybe as this journey continues, our stomachs will get stronger, but for right now, not gonna do it. But we are headed to a small little town up in the mountains to look for a key that we need to borrow from the tourist office to drive farther up into the mountains and opens the gate to a pretty cool place. Let's go see if this works out. It's always nice when you're just headed straight for your destination and everything's going great and then the road is gone. <laughs> they have it closed for major reconstruction a nice gentleman just pointed us around. He said, you go up over the hill and you go around to get to town. And this is the town we need to get to, to borrow a key to get to the secret place that we're trying to get to. Now this is way off the beaten path. This is not something that many people do at all. And we hope we can pull it off because it sounds pretty cool. Good backing up there, Kurt. Thank you. All right, we've been driving around in a few circles around this little town of Lamud, and we finally found the Oficina de Turismo. Kurt is headed in there, and the way we think this place works is it's up, it's farther up, it's up in the mountains from this town, but it's locked. So you come here and you sign out the key. That's what we hope anyway. We're gonna find out in just a minute. Wow, okay, so we can get the key at three. We can go up there and camp for the night. We can hike tomorrow and then return the key here. Okay. But we have to wait till two or three for the key. Okay. We can park down there at the tourist center. So we'll be out of the way and there's a nice place to open the door for the okay. keys. Can we fit under that gate? I think so. Okay. It is three o'clock. We parked here in the yard of the tourist office and waited till later in the afternoon like she said we needed to do. Now Kurt has gone inside to pick up the key. We gave the kitties a walk while we were here. We're gonna get the key. And then the Google says 28 minutes. 
till we get up to the up to the secret place we're taking you guys. All right. I got two tickets and the key. The key to the gate. Now, this little town right here is kind of unique. But that's not our destination. We're going to go out here to our camp spot tonight. The key is going to grant and us right access and to our camping spot. And you guys should know that we're in a region of multiple ruins and Inca, Inca in history and things like this. So we're going to be taking you to a very sacred place. So we're on this road going out here and a little bit of research we were able to do on this. It's actually hard to find any information on this at all. This is very off the beaten path. But everyone talks about that the road can be a real mess if it rains. And uh, we've seen some pictures and a few video clips of the road of being a mess. It's bumpy, but it's good and dry. So we're in good shape. From this viewpoint on this mountain, we can look all the way across the valley over to Gokta. We can see that waterfall we did that in the last episode. Huge waterfall, it's right there. It looks kind of small from right here because we're a long ways away. But we were right down there in that valley looking up at this place right here. And I kept telling Snow on these steep cliffs is where we're headed next. Wow. This is crazy, guys. We just drove through that big canyon right through there on that road we were showing you guys. We're up on top of those mountains now. And wait till you see what we're gonna show you. Wait till you see this crazy hike we're gonna do up here. You guys are gonna flip. We are up here and settled into our camp and all of a sudden, like, 50 people came up. They've apparently been doing maintenance. They're all winding down their day, signing out. And uh, they're all very intrigued with the van and with G-Money. So it's no surprise, Kurt's out there in the middle of this, making friends. That's what he does. He is the social side of our team. Right, Kurt? <laughs> all right, it's time for them to load up. They're gonna all get in the back of the pickups. I see four. Wonder how many will get in each truck. There might be more pickup trucks behind that I can't see, but look at them. They're squishing in. <laughs> the La Chicas get in the front. <laughs> I think they've done it. I think all those people have got into four pickup trucks. Bye bye. <laughs> it's getting cold up here. We're at about 8,000 foot elevation. The sun's just gone down over the clouds which we happen to be over top of tonight. And so that's really nice, but it is getting cold. And we also have what looks to be close to, if not a total full moon, as we're atop of this Pueblo de los Muertos. Now a bit earlier, I was, earlier I was trying to capture this beautiful sunset with a drone. And I started following the trail down trying to get a sneak peek at what we might be up against tomorrow morning and lo and behold i see our target destination and right about then i lost signal with the drone running like a crazy <laughs> <laughs> snow saw me out the window i just started running down the hill i was following the trail down and so probably what happened was I was down below sort of where line of sight of the drone. I was actually, because it's down, it's down is where they're at. Anyway, I ran down the mountain, I probably ran down the mountain for 20 minutes. <laughs> Fortunately, the drone activated into return home mode 
and on its way home I got signal back and was able to bring it home safely I did go through the whole emotional roller coaster of letting it go and accepting it and all that stuff before I finally <laughs> you brought it in we so. still have a drone don't worry we just had some macaroni and cheese and broccoli and uh, chicken chicken for dinner dishes are clean we're about to button it up and go to bed so we'll see you guys on this hike. We're super excited. See you in the morning. Good morning. We had a nice, super quiet, peaceful night's sleep. Uh, we woke up this morning to a lot of clouds. We were definitely in the clouds, so we've waited for them to clear. I don't know, maybe it's around 8.30. The clouds have cleared. We're about to set off on this hike. Let's go. It was our goal to get out before the workers got here. But we woke up and it, we were in the clouds. It was foggy. So we waited for that to burn off. We had a nice little fun time hanging out with the workers this morning. They love the cats. I think there were some new ones here today that couldn't wait to see the cats. So we got those out. Anyway, it was just really cool. Just hanging out with the Peruvian people again. I always wish that I spoke a better, bit better Spanish, but getting better. slowly getting better over time. But today we saw the climb on the drone, so we're playing it by ear as far as snow goes. A couple things I want to show you, again for point of reference, over there is Goka. And from the waterfall we couldn't see what was on top, but you can see it's kind of a high plain up there where the water's coming from. And then down below us, down way down there, is a river. And that is the river we drove along. So we came right through that cavern or that canyon through there, staring up at these sheer walls. And lo and behold, <laughs> we're up on top of them. And kind of wondering how Snow's feeling about looking at Gokta. But we got a ways to go. We're just getting started on this hike. So I don't think this is any longer about Gokta. This is about getting to Pueblos de la Muerto. Yeah, I don't think we've told you guys what this place is. Um, it is a place literally on the edge of a cliff where they believe that the uh, Incas buried their very important people. They don't know if they were priests or kings or royalty or just wealthy. But uh, it's a graveyard built into the cliffs. And that's where we're headed right now. Now, one thing I want to tell you guys is not many people come here at all. So on all of Kurt's apps that tell us about hikes and the ups and downs and the difficulty level, there is no information on this hike. So I'm kind of going in it blind, knowing that there are some very steep spots. So we're kind of 50-50 on whether I will make it or not, but I'm going to try. But if it gets too steep, I'll turn around and head back to the van. So cross your fingers, guys. Look at the orchid on top of that little hut. Yeah. All right, so this is an area where they've, the crew has come in and cleaned up already a little bit. And we saw them cleaning up over at Gokta as well. So maybe it's a government project that's going on in all these different parks. Maybe the time of year. Some beautiful orchids on the trail. But so far we're working our way down without problems. So that's good news. Other than the trail workers, it looks like we're the only people who've come down here based on the sign-in list. We certainly are, probably since they've been working on it. But anyway, we're kind of wrapping around the corner. And I think we're going to get a peek here in a little bit. They said it's about a 30-minute walk down. Snow's doing really good. And a little slow, but it's all worth it. We're getting some stunning views. We got three waterfalls in sight. The lighting's not really allowing me to show you right now but maybe on the way back. 
I'm gonna tell you it's about a 3,000 foot drop right here at least 2,500 where every bit as high as Goked is over on the other side and we were down on the river so it's almost like we have a drone shot right here we're looking down on a little bit of farmland it looks like there's a little community up on top of that hill and I don't know if they get up there by a mule and walking I don't see a road or anything that would get them up there and that's not uncommon here but in any event I gotta catch up with snow she's just booking it today doing really good guys doing really good <laughs> there's no edge <laughs> <laughs> Give you a bit of perspective we came from all the way up top there around the way so pretty good elevation drop I'm gonna tell you it's gonna be a thousand feet by the time we're all said and done maybe a little bit more so good day's work for snow and for me so we're here <laughs> our man is way up there we're going down <laughs> one little teeny tiny switchback here left and then we're on a pretty much flat trail that wraps around this cliff's edge to the gate the rocks are really bright red pretty red and to, the left, there's to the left is straight down don't look don't even look I think you, gotta show them, you guys it's straight down it's just straight down I gotta say, this is just surreal. We're on the side of a cliff. Look at this. We've wrapped all the way around this thing, and now we're walking beside a sheer cliff, both up and down. So if you wanna know what's below us, Nothing. look what's in front of us, and up to the right. Wow. This place is just stunning. And you know, who would have thought three years ago <laughs> when we started this journey, we ended up, we'd end up hanging off the edge of a cliff, snow leading the way. All right, let's go. All right, we're now entering in to a sacred burial space for the Inca warriors and kings. So 
for the people new to the channel, Kurt's got the heebie-jeebies with heights. Definitely. So this is a pretty crazy thing for him to be doing. They say the farther you go on the trail, the sketchier it gets. All right, guys, this is the end of the road for me. As you can see right here, I would literally have to scale down this wall. That's about a 50 foot plummet to get around there. There's some foot places and some hand grabs to go a little bit further. Definitely, definitely not gonna risk it. I'm beyond my comfort zone anyway. Snow freaking out. Snow is freaking me out. She's not freaking out. She is freaking me out as she's standing on that ledge hanging off this mountain. Look how stunning this place is, guys. Wow. And how about snow for making it out here? Still gotta make it back to the van. We gotta make it back. It's okay. All right, so I'm gonna give you my hand. I put my uh, I put my foot there and then right here. So give me your hand, please. No, I'm here. I'm okay. I'm okay too. This is the part I had to think.
<laughs> that was stupid. <laughs> that was stupid, guys. But we saw a once in a lifetime thing and we're okay now. We're back on, it's still iffy ground, but we're good. We just got up to the first bench on the way up and it's kind of starting to sink in. My nerves and my adrenaline were so pumped up. But I gotta tell you, for me, that was a first. Yeah, I've crazy. never been out on cliffs that sheer, just out on the edge of it all. With no rails, no nothing. And I'm afraid of heights. <laughs> and it was just really, the whole time was super intense. But at the same time, what an amazing Epic. experience. And so I was kind of wondering how I would feel going in there and it just it was just so intense it's hard to even describe but what an amazing for, yeah. experience for people for the incas to take their time to find that kind of place that overlooks what they probably considered was some sort of a sacred valley and carry the bodies out there and build the burial stuff out there they were one very important people and two the the Incas must just, I mean, well, we know they cared about the afterlife and all that stuff so much, but man, to build a graveyard out there, it's unbelievable. Uh, it was, it was an intense experience. And I want to tell you, it was more nervous for me to watch snow climb around on some of those <laughs> narrow edges than it was for that me myself. One. I just wanted to grab her arm. I kept saying, let me grab your hand or your arm. And she was persistent, no, but. Uh, the wall was sturdy. I had a good hold. That last one was spooky though. I was glad to be off of that. Now we're just on the side of a mountain instead of a cliff. It's okay. <laughs> it's a long way up, guys. Standing still at the edge of the world Feel the silence, can it all work? In the air, it's starting to stir Gotta go, go, go Gotta run, run, run Never thought I'd be stuck in the sand Sometimes things don't go as you plan I got dreams in the palm of my hand You get me going, you keep me moving, you got me on my way with what you're doing, you get me going, a superhuman, and I want more, more, more of what you're doing, you get me going. psycho hike <laughs> and I did it Whew, let's go and we made it back up to where the workers are hey hola hola bienvenido Peru Peru <laughs> so I'm hustling back to get back to the van. We made it to a safe spot for snow, but I'm hustling back. I wanted to show you the beautiful work these guys are doing. They're busting up these rocks into flagstones and making steps. 
they're doing a really good job but anyway i wanted to hustle back up so i can whip up some sandwiches and get the van ready to go there's my house i've only been more happy to see it one time and that was the other day at Gokta. but i'm pretty happy to see it now Whew, let's go have some lunch i officially made it and a little bit before the hike was over, I don't know if Kurt told y'all, but he ran ahead to make us lunch. So I arrived, dead tired, exhausted, calves starting to cramp in the van to a yummy chicken salad sandwich and a big old thing of pina juice. What a day. What a day. If you like this video, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that notification bell so you guys know when we put out new videos. And don't forget, you can always follow us over on Instagram to see what's going on in between videos. Cheers, guys!